It is mid-April and it has been very wet. One of the few plants that love these wet conditions are the snake's head fritillaries. They are the absolute stars of the garden at the moment. Hello and welcome to my garden. The hellebores are now starting to fade, but I love how the snake's head fritillaries are taking over. And I think the colors pick up really well on the colors of these hellebores. I've made a few changes to this part of the garden again. You might remember that I had these thyme growing in front of this border, but I didn't like it, so I took them out. I've replaced them with this variety. It is also a thyme, uh, but it is a ground cover. So this whole ground will be covered with green and they will get some white flowers as well, which the bees will absolutely adore. The hellebores that I had growing in pots, I've planted them out here in this border as well, as well as the border behind me. I absolutely adore the snakes at fritillaries. They don't last very long, but when they are in flower, I enjoy every moment of them. And while the flowers of the hellebores are fading, the daffodils start to flower. My little cold frame is absolutely packed with seedlings at the moment. There's no space left. I'm growing lots of different things in here. These are honey tomatoes. They were given to me by my mom. And these are the most expensive tomatoes that you can buy in the supermarket. And they're really sweet. So I'm looking forward to growing them myself this year. Over here, I have my crochets. They're doing really well as well as the cucumbers that are over here. And I have some butternut pumpkins here as well. I have lots of flowers growing in here. I have snapdragons, I have calendula, and I have a lot of varieties of cosmos. And the cosmos really need to be pricked out, so that's what I'm going to do right now. It is time to prick out my cosmos, and this is a variety called cupcakes. The flowers are white with a pale pink color. So I've prepared a tray of plastic containers with compost mixed with some sand in it. So I'm carefully loosening the soil. And then I lift it. And then I hold it by the leaf, never by the stem, so that it doesn't damage. And this is a perfectly healthy young seedling. So prepare a hole. And pop it in there. There you have it. 
one healthy cosmos plant. I absolutely love cosmos. They're such an easy plant to grow and will give you loads of flowers. When the seedlings are strong and big enough, I will plant them out into the garden. In July, when many plants have finished flowering, the cosmos will take over. They're not only great in a border, but they will make wonderful cut flowers as well. The more you will pick, the more new flowers they will make. And this was the last one. So these are now all finished. I'm going to give them a good watering and then I will probably plant them out mid-May or end of May. These are the beetroot that I sowed at the beginning of February and by the looks of the leaves they're not quite happy to be sitting in these modules anymore. So now it's time to prick them out and I'm going to plant them into this bed. I like them to be planted in a straight line so I'm using this piece of wood to get a straight line. So now I'm going to prick them out carefully. And I use this old blunt knife to get them out. I gently tear the plants apart. So this is quite a healthy plant. So I'm just going to plant it here. Pop it in. Carefully lift the clump and tear the plants apart. I've only placed two seeds in a module in case one of them wouldn't germinate, not realizing that one seed makes more than one plant. So now I've ended up with way more seedlings than I have space for. So I plant them a little bit closer than usual. 
When they grow on, I will thin them out and I will use the small leaves in a salad and let the other plants grow into tasty beetroots. Make a hole and pop it in. As it is very sunny and dry, I water the seedlings before I continue. I also water the little trench where I plant my other seedlings. Give them a good watering after planting. There is still a hydrangea and a bell that needs pruning. And a bell produces flowers on this year's growth, so I can cut them back down to the ground. Using the prunings as cuttings. Make a cut above a leaf node. Cut below a leaf node. And all you have to do is to stick them into the soil and keep them moist. And after a couple of months you will have new hydrangea plants. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you ever so much for watching and don't forget to watch till the end for some bloopers. See you next time. I absolutely adore the snakes at fraternities. They don't last very well long. Noise. Over here I have my courgettes, they're doing really... Over here I have my courgettes, they're doing... Blap. Over here I have my crochets, they're doing really well, thank you, dove, pigeon.
whatever. And the cosmos near it. And I have uh, Goudsbloemen, Goudsbloemen, Marigolds, no, I don't know, Marigolds, no. I don't know what they're called. I don't know what they're called. So I have prepared a tray of... Of what? And then I will probably plant them out into the garden mid-May or end-May. Nice. I will give this a good... And then I will probably plant them out mid and May in the garden. What's that noise? I will give these a good watering and then they can go, go into strong healthy plants and I will probably be blah de blah de blah. I will water these and then they go... <laughs> hmm. These are the beetroot that I sow at the beginning of February and now it's time and I'm going to plant them into this border bed. <laughs> that was a nice eh? windy uh, experience. These are wind. Wind is it. Nog meer wind. Lots of wind. <laughs> <laughs>